Have you ever wondered uh, why you find probability or statistics hard? I mean, I'm assuming that you will, because most people do, including sometimes myself, even though I'm uh, hopefully an expert in it. Um, in fact, the reason is that most people find probability hard. And that's not because uh, you can't do it. And I mean, we do it better or well, or worse, different ones of us. But psychologically, there are things that actually get in the way. And understanding that helps. I mean, you still need to deal with that, but actually understanding that it, it's not just you. Um, so first of all, let's look at probability. So why is probability so hard? We've got two systems that are working in our brain. One of them is this sort of um, back of brain, old, um, some people call it the reptile brain, the sort of subconscious, the processing that goes on and that we share with most of the animal kingdom. So you've probably all seen uh, the pictures in the past of the pigeons tapping away in uh, Skinner's experiments. Um, that sort of behavioral conditioning where you train things by giving the same uh, stimulus again and again and again, and animals sooner or later learn how to deal with that. Um, we have those kinds of learning. If we uh, get the same uh, experience again and again, we build up habits, uh, we learn to do things, we might learn new skills, we might learn to play an instrument or to be able to manage a new piece of equipment. Uh, so that's going on all the time. In addition, of course, we have this sort of front of brain thinking, the, the more um, analytic, uh, more logical, more conscious, um, and a variety of things going on there. But it's this sort of thinking you're aware of doing and is, is linear. So it's to do with that conscious chain of thought. The, the subconscious is all wiggling around, multiple things happening at the same time. But our conscious thinking is much more sequential. Now, the unconscious part, the bit that's more animal-like, um, is actually quite good at learning from large amounts of stimulus. So over a long period of time it learns, not so good at learning very, very rapidly. So it, it sort of builds up an almost probabilistic model, the subconscious does over time. You see different things, but one thing more than another, and it builds up. Our conscious mind's very good at learning from a single exposure. Once you have that dodgy curry and you're never going to go to that cafe again for it. You know, you only need it once to know. Whereas um, the subconscious takes a long time to learn that kinds of thing. However, the conscious part is less good at probability. The way we manage this one-shot learning by thinking about things is to sort of almost posit a single model of the world. So our unconscious sort of deals with the sort of nuanced, fuzzy, uh, uh, multiple worlds almost at the same time, half overlaying. Our conscious mind likes a single reality. And that it's difficult for probability. And you see that, you might have come across this experiment. There's an um, experiment they do, and they have a pack of cards and they have different colored backs. Like here, I've got some blue cards and some red cards. And the idea is you sit the person and they're gonna do the experiment and they, uh, they get a reward at the end, depending on how well things go. And sometimes they get, get the blue backed cards and sometimes they get the red backed cards. Now, these cards I've got are just ordinary playing cards, but the cards I had an experiment, one side on this side tells you a gain or a loss. So sometimes you might gain a lot, sometimes you might lose a lot, sometimes gain a little, sometimes lose a little. Both kinds of cards have some gains and some losses, but one kind tends to be slightly better than the other kind. Now, when people play this game, after a bit, they work out whether the red cards are better or the blue cards are better. But what you do is in addition, you wire them up with a little um, galvanic skin response meter, a thing measuring your skin conductivity and which is basically your sweatiness, uh, which is a way of measuring your emotional response. And what happens, and let's say the red cards are better than the blue cards, and the blue cards you tend to lose in. What happens is before the person is able to say, ah, the blue cards are the worst ones, before that ever happens, when a blue card gets dealt, one of the bad cards, their GSR, their skin response goes peak. So way before the conscious mind is able to work out which is better using its means, the more probabilistic back-end mind manages. Um, 
Now, that's all well and good, but um, and sometimes, actually, you can use that. You can use your instinctive reactions. But, of course, if we're dealing with um, the sort of phenomena you get with large bits of data, we're not going to start um, training pigeons to do this. Um, so we can understand why it's difficult. What we actually have to do with our more conscious thinking is revert to other means and be more mechanical, be more logical, be more mathematical about it. So often things don't give you that, ah, I understand feeling. You often have to actually do the, the uh, mathematical manipulations to, to get there. OK, so much for probability. What about statistics? <laughs> well, if probability was hard, Statistics, you typically need to understand a bit of probability for. So that's going to make it a bit difficult to start with. So you need some maths because in order to deal with probability, we need to do some maths. So you need a bit of maths and you can try and make it more or less depending on what, what you're dealing with. But you need a certain amount of mathematical understanding to be going on there. However, you can't forget the real world. You also have to keep track of the fact that that mathematics refers to real phenomena. It's real users you're testing. It's real people. If you forget that, things go completely wrong. So if somebody is an absolute whiz on their maths, um, but doesn't quite understand how it relates to the real world, they're not going to do well at statistics. If you understand the real world, but can't grasp the mathematics, then again, you're not going to do well. So you need to hold both in, in at the same time. So what you can, we can do different things about that. You can learn more about the understanding of how the maths relates to the real world. And um, in some of the videos produced to try to help that. You can also try and um, make the mathematics uh, more amenable, more sensible to people. And hope again, in some of the videos that I've got will help you to do that. So, I mean, the takeaway from this is it's hard, but I don't want you to frighten you by saying it's hard. I want you to understand that when you find it hard, it's not just you. Um, but also that because if you can understand why it's hard, you're at the first steps of actually trying to make it better.